Well, welcome everybody. It's good to see some of you, some of old faces that haven't been in a bit. Good to have you here today. You know, I know that it's a it's a battle. It's a battle that people are in, and you know, uh, I, I did um, Brother Dan Paul's funeral yesterday out at the graveside. Not fun stuff, man. It's a battle. I get that. But I do know this. The battle belongs to the Lord. Amen? The battle belongs to the Lord. I trust Jesus. I trust Jesus with all my heart, my soul, my mind. He's got it. Amen? He's got it. He's got us. Amen? And that's where we, we need to stay. We've had great prayer meetings this week. Monday through Friday, we had wonderful prayer meetings. So every, every night this week, we'll be praying. Um, Monday through Friday, 7 p.m., Thursday night, we move out to the fellowship hall, but we're in here in the sanctuary. We're online. <laughs> this man, you, you, came, you came one night this week. Was it a little different than being online? Yeah, it's a lot better being uh, in person. <laughs> being in person. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's a, a powerful anointing in here when we're praying, eh? I'm telling you. So if you can make it, great. If you can't, we, we invite you to join online with us. If you're online with us today, we welcome you. We're glad that you're here with us um, in spirit. Amen. And uh, don't, don't give up. Keep connecting. Keep staying connected to the Lord, praying, seeking, and, and worshiping God. Amen. Dropping the hammer of his word. Drop it on your life so that there's no stones in our lives. Amen. That's where, you know, that's why I always say, you know, we, we have authority and we have power. And, uh, you know, Mark 16, it says we have the the power to cast out demons, you know. And I, when I preach about that, I say the best place to start is when you look in the mirror. <laughs> deal with your own demons, amen? Deal with your own junk. Look in the mirror and deal with that stuff. Speak to it. Tell it to go. You know, and, and just when you thought you got it all done and you're all good, you know, and you're cruising along, it seems like, it's like, where did that come from? And it pops up again. You're like, I've been done with that. You know, Bob, we say, I've been done. I'm not, that's not an issue anymore. Get away, devil. And you got to talk to it. And you got to tell it to go. Amen. I read a, my, well, my met, title of my message today is uh, Turnaround 2021. And, and, and don't forget, if you haven't started fasting, start fasting. I've talked to so many people that are fasting and uh, giving up things and um, giving up coffee, you know. <laughs> you know, I, 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 start, I did a, a, a 40 day fast one time that was, um, was just fruits and vegetables. We did a Daniel fast, gave up coffee, meat, sugars, you know. And um, about the fourth day in, Lord, I got this pain in the back of my legs. And the pain was so bad and it, and it stayed there for about five days, this pain. And, and I told the Lord, I said, if you don't lift it, I got to drink some coffee. <laughs> if, if you don't take away this pain, I'm going to have to break this thing because I can't take the pain and I don't like taking Motrin. And, he, and he, the pain went because you, we have, we put so much junk in us that, we have, that when we stop putting it in us, it's like all these toxins get released in your body and it causes pain. You, you know, you can look it up and read it on the internet. I'm telling you the truth. These, these pains come and you're like, oh my gosh, you know, your back, your kidneys area, they start hurting and everything, you know, because you're, you're not putting the junk in there. So the, the junk that's there is looking for a place to go. And it just, it, it's a pain. And you know, some of you might get headaches, you know, but uh, tell it to go. You know, I, I, I was taking a shower this week and the drain was clogged. The, you know, the water, you know how the water starts filling up in the tub a little bit, you know? And I'm like, oh, great, you know? And I just, I just kept showering and, and I started worshiping the Lord and Delonda was on the phone and my daughter could hear me, you know, door closed and everything. I just started worshiping the Lord and I just, just said, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And as I'm in the shower, and the next thing I know, all the water's gone. I'm like, what? I mean, when I declared the name of Jesus, that drain went unclogged. 
Some of you start, need to start declaring the name of Jesus so you get unclogged. Yes. That the filter of God just cleanse you, amen? Yes. That's what this fast will do. It'll cleanse you. It'll clean you out in the name of Jesus, amen? But uh, my friend Elena posted a meme last week, and, I, and I, I'm going to show it to you today. Go ahead and throw that up there. It says, I recently heard some great advice. Emotions are like children. It's okay to let them ride in the car with you, but don't let them in the driver's seat. Amen. Don't let your emotions drive right now. Amen. Because we know that there's a lot of stuff going on and we just can't let our emotions steer our ship right now. Amen. We've got to stay grounded and rooted in the word of God and trusting Jesus. And so today we'll focus on turning around our emotions. <laughs> How many of you had an emotional week? I know my daughter called me crying on Wednesday. Dad, my kids are not going to grow up in the country I grew up in. And I'm thinking, you didn't even grow up in the country I grew up in. <laughs> and I didn't grow up in the country you grew up in. Some of you older saints. <laughs> we, we were reading the prayer scriptures on Friday night. And, and, and the scripture said, I was young, but now I'm old. Delonda goes, you read that one. <laughs> Why don't you stand with me? Let's read the word this morning. First Samuel chapter 17, two different verses. Verse 11, when Saul and all Israel heard these words of the Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. Verse 24, and all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him and were dreadfully afraid. Dear Heavenly Father, as we talk today on our emotions, as we, we just dissect these passages, Father God, of fear, Lord, I pray that you, Lord, would turn us around from we, where we've been, and Lord, that we would be rooted and grounded in your word and not moved by what's happening in the world. But Lord, only move to action in the sense of praying, worshiping and declaring your word, God. So Lord, I pray your strength over each one of us today. Give us an ear to hear what the spirit would say in Jesus name. And everybody said, amen. amen. You may be seated. Well, I, I'm glad the seats filled in. I was a little, you know, filled in a little more. I was a little worried at the beginning when I turned around. I'm like, oh boy. <laughs> I don't worry about how many people come. I told Delonda, goes, it's sparse. I said, that's you and me are here. That's good. You know, two or more gathered together, amen. And we got you online watching us. I don't know what camera, I think it's that one. You online watching us today, and we're glad that you're here with us. Share it, share it out there so somebody else can see it. But how many of you know we are emotional people? We are very emotional. And, uh, you know, whenever I, I'm going to talk about things, it seems like it pops up in my life. You know, that God's dealing with me about my emotions, about what I say about things, how I respond to things and stuff. It's like when we taught a marriage class for five and a half years, Delonda, she'd tell me, just tell me what you're talking about every week so I know what we're going to go through, you know. <laughs> and it was like that. It was like every time, you know, uh, I was, we were talking one time about um, very intimate conversation in our marriage class. And... Uh, so Delon and I started having very intimate conversations. And I start because believe it or not, I used to be really quiet. I mean, I was always loud, but I didn't talk a lot. And because I didn't talk a lot, Delon didn't know really who I was. And so when, because um, I didn't share. So when, when, when we started teaching this class and we're talking about intimate communication and I, I started having, sharing my heart with Delonda, every, things I thought. She's like, stop, stop. I, I don't know who you are. Please stop talking. I, you're not the guy that I thought you were. You know, because when I started to share, it scared her. She's like, what? <laughs> Didn't you tell me to stop talking? You know, and, and so everything that we go through, so when we're talking about emotions, you know, I even talked to the staff about their emotions and about what people are really going through right now and how emotional of a time this is, but it's how we handle our emotions that matters, amen? We can't allow our emotions to get the best of us. 
All right, Dale, I know we're good. <laughs> I got one amen. We can't allow our emotions to get the best of us. But in this passage in uh, Samuel 17, we see that King Saul and all the men were afraid because of the warrior Goliath. You know, and the more I read around this, I began to see how the emotion or the spirit of fear worked through the people around them. What began to happen in the people that were there? You know, when I was a youth pastor here, we had a good sized youth group and um, I took 55 kids to Raging Waters one day. Yeah, and uh, we had a big old bus at that time. I said, and I told them, you guys come, I'll bungee jump. And they're like, all right. I said, I'm going to bungee jump at noon. You can run around and play, but, but come to the bungee jump at noon and I'm going to jump. And they're like, all right. You know, so all the kids came around at noon and I got in this little cart and it takes you up by cable up 138 feet in the air. You know, it's just this little cart, you know, enough room for me and that guy in their little door. And I'm standing there going up and you know, we were watching people jump before that just took them forever to get jump out of that thing, you know, but I was determined in my heart. I am not going to be controlled by my fear. So as I was going up in that little cart, that guy says, he says, okay, we're going to get to the top. And when I get to the top, I'm going to open the door. And he goes, I want you to step in it backwards. And I want you to put your heel on the opening. He says, then I want you to stretch your hands out in front of you and I'm going to touch your hands and I want you to fall backwards. I said, okay. <laughs> I could see all the young people down there cheering me on. Delanda was there and, and uh, I got to the top. That little door opened up. I stepped in. I put my hands out like this. He touched them and I just swan dived backwards right out of the thing. I did not hesitate. I thought if I hesitate, it's going to be over. But I extended my hands. Delonda said, I did a perfect swan dive out of that thing. <laughs> you know, if I hadn't jumped out of fear or maybe wisdom, as you might be thinking right now, uh, <laughs> There would have been a whole bunch of other emotions. But, you know, because I did jump. Well, I mean, I was excited. I was happy. I was joyful. And if I dare say, I was a little proud of myself for not even hesitating. You know, I just stepped in, jumped out. Now, if I hadn't jumped, oh, man, I would have had to put up them 55 kids all day. <laughs> I would have felt disappointment. I would have probably been a little sad. I would have probably been a little disgusted, a little embarrassed, and maybe a little shame, you know, that I, that I couldn't do it. You know, I was at the King's River one time, and that river was climbed on. It was like, here he goes. You knew I was going there, didn't you? There's this big boulder, and people were diving off that boulder into the river. Now, that river was cold. It was ice cold. And uh, Dawn is like, go do it, Ron. I'm like, no, I don't want to do it. And she's like, no, go do it. Don't be a chicken. <laughs> I, I mean, she, and, then, and then she starts yelling at me, don't be a chicken. Get up there and do it. You know, and I'm like, oh, my gosh. So she, she uh, goaded me into climbing that rock and, and doing the dive, which she would not do. <laughs> a little payback there, honey, you know. <laughs> But, you know, when we let fear control us, we're, we're, we're um, not going to get where I feel like we need to be. And I'm not saying you've got to jump out of a 138-foot tower or you've got to jump off a rock into a freezing river. I probably wouldn't do that again. But um, in Israel, their fear was strong and their emotions were strong. You know, how you respond to life situations with your emotions will determine your joy and peace. You know, this week, I just kept declaring the word of the Lord. I didn't let it get my joy. I didn't let it get my peace. I just, you know, stayed the course with the word. I kept dropping the hammer out. You know, you need to write that scripture down. Jeremiah 23, 24, 29, thank you. 23, 29. You need to write that one down and keep declaring that. 
But in verse 28 in, in 1 Samuel 17, you see anger. Everybody say anger. anger. Come out against David from his brother because David in his mind, in, in Eliab's mind, was arrogant. Because David's going, hey, what's the king going to give us if we, if we go fight that guy? What's, you know, he starts inquiring. He starts talking to guys. You know, hey, I'm, you know, I'm going to get what if I go? You know, you're going to get riches. You're going to get to marry his daughter. And so his brother hears that he's inquired. And his brother gets angry at him that he's even talking about it. You know, you arrogant little fool. Who do you think you are? You're not a warrior. You're the shepherd boy. Get back out and tend to the sheep. Stop getting around here talking and stirring up trouble. You're, you're, no, you're, no, you're, you're, you're just a little kid. David says, um, I'm going to fight the guy. You see, but a lot of times when, when our emotions aren't the same, when you got somebody that's living in fear and then you got somebody that's not, that says, oh, I'm going to fight the giant. And you're like, you know, then they, the, the anger comes out because they wouldn't do it. But here this little kid comes up and he's like, oh, I'll go do it. And the king says, you're not a, you're not a warrior. Who, who, you know, you don't even have any armor. Tried to give him his armor. Let me tell you this. Don't try and fit into anybody's armor. Amen. When you're in a situation and you're with other people and you're not afraid, but they are, it can create division. In David's case, he wasn't afraid. His brothers were. They lashed out at him. In those situations, it's usually their own guilt that has brought on the anger. I read an article the other day about the struggles the church is going through today. And um, it says that division in the church is at an extreme high right now. And the division has come because, and I'm going to give you a list of things that I put down here. Number one, COVID-19 can kill you. We should not meet. Number two, we can't forsake the gathering together of the saints. Number three, we should wear a mask. Number four, mask doesn't stop you from getting COVID. Number five, we should be outside. Number six, we should be inside. Number seven, you should do online only. Number eight, you should be online and allow guests. I mean, there's so much turmoil in the body of Christ over this issue right now that is creating a division. Now, I like having people here, but I don't care if you're here, if you're online, as long as you're not disconnecting from God and the body of Christ. Phone it in if you have to. What I mean by that is stay connected with people. See, because when you're, when you're off and you're home and you're alone, I, I talked to one one sister, she called me last week. She said, yeah, my kids don't want me to come anymore. And I'm like, okay. And then another lady I've told you about, she, um, she has me come to the corner of the property out of the range of the cameras that her kids have up so she can give me her tithe so that um, she can still give. But she doesn't want her family to know that she saw the pastor. Because kids get worried about their parents and um, don't want them to go to church, don't want them to go out. And, you know, I'm sure some of you have heard, stay home, stay home, stay home. And, but yet, here you are. <laughs> I mean, for me, here in the presence of the Lord, it's the safest place I know of. Do you, have people from here gotten COVID? Yes, but they haven't gotten it here. Amen. I know it's real. Practice social distancing, especially when you're out in the world. You don't know. But people are getting it, and it is a definite issue. But when you look at all these, the motions of people are really strong in this. And what you're comfortable with has got to be okay with you. If you're not comfortable with it, don't do it. If you don't have the peace, I, I called um, our, our district this week. I said, vaccine, no vaccine. They said, whatever you're comfortable with. Said, okay. He said, whatever you have peace about. I'm like, all right. If you got peace to take it, take it. If you don't, don't. 
I, I mean, I looked at the list of who can get a vaccine, and I'm way down on that list. <laughs> so I, I don't even have to think about it. You know, some of you that are 75 and above, you're, you're um, in that second round of shots if you want to get it. You know, those of you that are in the, the medical profession, have you gotten it? Okay. Have you been offered it? Okay. <laughs> Just checking. Now, why didn't you take it? Many, many factors. Okay. Send me an email. Tell me why. I want to I wanna know what, what your thoughts are on it, you know? You don't, I don't want to know what your thoughts are. <laughs> Just send it to me in an email. You don't have to tell me out right now. Tell me your thoughts. PastorRon.RK at gmail.com. It'll come right to me. But I want to know your thoughts. I was reading a lady's response to all the, the shutdowns and everything in the government. And she said, you know, I'm very high risk. So I stay at home. I don't go out. She said, but please let those that either don't care or not at risk that want to work, please let them do that so that our economy doesn't tank. You know, don't restrict people that don't want to be restricted. Let them go. You know, and uh, see, that's where we need to be is you have your thoughts. You have your emotions on things. And that's where you need to be. Now, if we don't line up, if my emotions don't line up with the word of God, then I've got to put them in check to the word. Amen. We've got to, um, we've got to uh, get a handle on all this. But many times we deflect on others how we're feeling. Uh, we like to think that everybody feels the same way that we do. Amen. Which is far from reality. Delon and I don't even feel the same way on a lot of things. We're totally different. But we get along. So we, we have to be able to do that. We have to be able to get along, even though our opinions may differ. And we've seen our nation go through some very trying times this week, amen? Many people are living in fear of what could happen. And we, as a people of God, need to trust God and not live in fear, amen? We need to focus on Jesus through prayer and the word and stand upon the word of God. And as I've been saying, let the hammer drop and know that God has got us. God has got you, Amen? You know, it is said through the word that the, mind, the, the person is made up of three parts. The body, our soul, and spirit. So I want to talk about the soul of a man for a little bit in emotions. We have our mind, the will, and our emotions in the soul. Mind, will, emotions. Make up your soul. So the Bible's very clear on how to maintain your soul so that our soul acts in a godly manner. Our soul needs to act in a godly manner. Romans 5, I mean Romans 12, verse 1 and 2, it says, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body to living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. It's your reasonable service because that's what he did and he expects the same out of us. And then number two, here it is. He says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed. Everybody say transformed. transformed. By the renewing of your mind, amen, that you may prove wh what, it, what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So we know that the, the mind part of our soul, we're to renew. We're to renew it daily. We're to put the word in it daily. We're to feed our mind, amen, off of the word of God. And as I said a few weeks ago, we've got to stop getting intoxicated by the world and what the world is saying. And we need to become sober and vigilant about the things of God, amen. We need to wake up to the things of God and what he declares. And uh, the, the New Living Translation, it says, it says, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. See, that's what reading the word does. It changes the way you think. As you start reading it and you get it in you, it changes the way that you view things. Amen. You start, I, for me, it's, I have a lot of peace because I know God's got it. I know God's got me. Amen. So, um, 
We, we do this by the word. Now, what about your will? What do you do to, with your will? What? Surrender your will. That's what we were saying today. I surrender all. Surrender your will. Amen. Surrender your will. So we surrender it to God's will, his way of doing things and his way of being right. Amen. That's Matthew 6, Seek first God's way of doing things, his way of being right. And then all these things will be added unto you. So we surrender our will to God so that we are conforming Lord, to his way, how he does things. So what do we do with our emotions? That's what we're talking about today, our emotions. What do we do with our emotions? Let's go. Number one, don't let my emotions drive my life. Don't run rampant with your emotions. Even though we are emotional beings, we have a lot of emotions, don't let them control you. Don't let them in the driver's seat. Don't let them control your words coming out of your mouth. You know, um, and that's where we, we, we get stuck a lot is the words that come out of our mouth because of the emotions that we're feeling. Don't let your emotions drive your life. Number two, as I renew my mind, I measure my emotions to the word of God, okay? Um, I put, I put uh, letter A here under number two. Don't sin in anger. Don't sin in anger. You know, if you're angry about what's going on, don't sin. Don't say things. Don't declare things that are, that are um, wrong. Speak the word of God. Don't let the anger control you. Amen. Don't let your anger, like David's brothers, the anger, because they were afraid, their anger was directed at David because when it should have been directed at Goliath, their anger should have been directed at Goliath, that they'd line up and they'd all just go tackle that guy and kill him. You know, why, why couldn't they all just... Whoop? But that fear. And then B, Colossians 3, verse 8. But now is the time to get rid of anger, rage, malice, behavior, slander, and dirty language. It's time that we, we get rid of those things, amen? That Those are the things that shouldn't be part of our emotions. We should not have them. We should get that and submit it under God. But listen, he says, now is the time to get rid of. So I have to get rid of it. You have to get rid of it. We've got to get rid of the anger, the rage, the malicious behavior, the slander, the dirty language. We have to get rid of it. It's not like... It, Listen, I know the Holy Spirit is here to help you. The Holy Spirit is here to, to give you the strength to do it. But you have to make the decision, I'm going to do that. I'm going to let go of all that. It's time. Now is the time. Everybody say now. Now, now is the time. Amen. And then 2 Timothy, I got a C to this one. And remember, number two, it's about as I renew my mind, I measure my emotions to the word of God. But 2 Timothy chapter 1 God has not given me a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and self-discipline. So I have self-discipline. You have, if you have God, you have self-discipline. You can't say, I can't control it. I can't control the words. I can't control, I remember my mom. My mom was so funny. Yesterday was uh, five years that she'd passed away. And uh, just makes me think you know, a lot of things about my mom. She was such a wonderful woman. But my mom used to say, whatever. It just, it just come, you know, and, and I, I'm like, oh, mom, please. Can't just say whatever comes to your mind. She goes, that's the problem, Ryan. It doesn't get to my mind. It just gets to my mouth. <laughs> I'm like, mom, settle down. But we, we have to know that we have the discipline, the self-discipline or self-control to be able to not do that. How many of you do it? Say whatever comes in sometimes. I think we all do. But we got to realize we have that self-discipline. And then D, um, Galatians 5, 22 and 23, it says, but the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, Kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. You have self-control. You don't have to say it. You don't have to do it. You have self-control. Amen? 
You know, I heard a lot of what was going on in Washington, Trump supporters. I heard them say, we, we just stood there and watched as all these people. And they're like, we're not going in there. You know, they practice self-control. They didn't ca get caught up in that, that mob mentality and they, they backed off. They're like, I've seen too many videos this week. I don't even want to talk about it all. But we have self-control, amen? And because we have the spirit, we have that self-control. We have that discipline because we have the spirit. We don't have to let things fly out of us just because of our emotions. And then number three, I use my God-given authority to take control over my emotions. My God-given authority. And, and I don't say what I want and I don't do what my flesh is telling me to do. See, because man's made up of three persons, body, soul, and spirit. We need to be into the position that our spirit is the biggest part of our lives. See, when your spirit is ruling and reigning in your life, and even in fasting, like right now we're fasting, fasting silences the body. It shuts the body down. The body gets quiet, the body gets weak, and it's subdued. My soul, my mind, will, and emotions is not able to hear from my body because I'm fasting. It's weak. But my spirit, because I'm fasting, is soaring. My spirit is growing. My spirit is getting stronger. So my spirit, man, speaks the word of the Lord to my mind, will, and emotions so that I'm not succumbing to everything that's going on around me, but I'm succumbing to the spirit of God. I'm succumbing to the word of the Lord. I'm succumbing to what God is saying to be like, to do, amen, how to respond to things. I'm putting down those emotions, those anger. I'm using the authority that God has given me by the word of God, amen? And as we walk out the word of God that we're putting in, our emotions begin to take a back seat and we make a turnaround on our emotions and don't let them lead. And that's where we need. Now, I have emotions of joy, which I, I don't mind letting come out. I have emotions of love that I don't mind coming out. I have emotions of, of gratefulness, of thankfulness that I don't mind expressing, amen? But the negative ones, I want to put down. And though they're there, I don't want to let them lead. See, when, the word, when you're getting the word of God in you, it begins to take precedence in our lives and it directs our path as a light unto our feet. Amen? The word of God is the light unto our feet and it directs us. And we start going that way, we start acting that way, and we start responding to his word um, like no other time. You know, we, we know the word, we live it, we walk with the Lord in his word. Amen? And God's word becomes higher than our emotions. We don't let our emotions drive, amen? And God has given you authority for a turnaround so that we aren't filled with the wrong emotions and reacting to them. And, and that's, that's what we need right now. We need to be stable. We need to be steady. People need to look to the body of Christ and see a stability, to see people that aren't rocked by everything that's going around, but we, we war in prayer, amen? And the great thing about all of this is we're not alone. We are not alone in this. You don't have to do this on your own. Jesus has sent the promise of the Father, the Holy Spirit, to empower us. And this is where we get our self-control from. Turn over to John. It's not going to be on the board. John. You say, where? I'm looking. I'm looking. John, I'm going to say 16. You know, you, you want to lick your fingers and you don't, you know. <laughs> no, not John 16. Uh, John 15. Maybe John 14. No. Nope. It's somewhere in here. Oh, here it is. It is 16. 16, 14, and 15. He says, this is Jesus talking. He says, the Holy Spirit 
is talking about the Holy Spirit. He says, he will glorify me and he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. All things that the Father has are mine. Therefore, I said that he, the Holy Spirit, will take of what is mine and declare it to you. Now go to Matthew chapter 28. Jesus says in verse 18, Mario, you didn't turn on the lights, man. <laughs> all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Everybody say all. all. So who has all authority? We do. we do. Amen. We have authority. So if he's given us all this authority, we have authority on how we respond to things, on how we, we speak things, how we let our emotions run. We have authority. We have that self-control. Amen. We don't have to give into it because we have what? All authority. Amen. Because the Holy Spirit takes from what is Jesus and he declares it to us. Amen. So all authority has been given to him by all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. And so because we have authority, our role is to, could you turn these on? <laughs> I'm trying to get in that light. Oh, there are. Now I can see. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. It's teaching them to observe all things that I command you. And lo, I'm with you always, even in the end of the age. He's with you. He's with you. And he's called us and he's given us authority to go out and to win people. People are looking right now. People are searching for truth. People are looking for love. They're looking for peace right now. And if the body of Christ is not peaceable, how are we going to minister? How are we going to win them? I want to stir people to prayer. I want to stir people to the word. I don't want to stir people to, I, I got invited, you know, I, I got asked many times, are you going to Washington, D.C.? I'm like, no, I'm not going to Washington, D.C. Well, are you going to go to Sacramento? No, I'm not going to Sacramento. Are you going to L.A.? And I'm like, no, probably not. What are you going to do? I said, I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray. I remember we had John Harkey here ministering one time, and he, he said when um, Hawaii was, voting on same-sex marriage or whatever. And there was a big protest. 25,000 people showed up in Hawaii for this protest. And John said this. He says, if we could get 25,000 people just showed up and pray, we might make a difference. We might make a difference. And that, that's what God is calling us to, is to show up and pray, put our emotions, measure your emotions to the word of God. There's plenty in here about our emotions. Let the Spirit of God give you self-control. You got to do it. And, and when, you, when you don't and you make that mistake, repent. Just ask the Lord to forgive you. Did you want to say something, hon? Oh, no, okay. You're just looking like, yeah. <laughs> we have this self-control. And this is where we get our sound mind from, the Holy Spirit. We don't have to do this alone. We just need to be filled with the Spirit of God. Amen. We just need to connect with God in the Spirit and in His Word. Smith Wigglesworth, a minister from the 18, early 1900s, I think he went to be with the Lord in 42, 1942, but he, he was a powerful man of God. I mean, he went to a funeral one time yanked the body out of a coffin and declared life into it. And it fell to the ground. And he picked it up, put it up against the wall and declared life into it and it slid down the wall. He picked it up a third time and declared life into it and the man came back to life. This is all documented. It's in one of his books. Uh, just power. That's the kind of man of God he was. Some lady came to an altar call, had a big old tumor in her stomach, and he punched her in the stomach. And the tumor left, and she punched him back. <laughs> you, you can read ever-increasing faith. It's just incredible how this guy moved. But he, um, 
He gave a prophetic word before he died. He said that in the last days, there's going to be a coming together of the spirit and the word. And I want to encourage you to get the word in you. We started a daily Bible reading program online. You can go to um, newhopefwc.com, log in, and right on the front page, just log in to the daily Bible reading, and you can hit it and join and read the, through the Bible with us this year. And um, it's a little longer than last year because there's a great, um, man, that word's gone. A great explanation of the word. What do you call that? Um, before you, a revelation of the word that the, the man gives before you get into the word. And then you read the word. And uh, it is powerful. It is so good. So I encourage you to jump online with us. You can get the word by just reading it. But we need the Holy Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit to empower. We need the Holy Spirit to fill us. We need the Holy Spirit to encourage us. We need the Holy Spirit for that self-control that we need real bad. Why don't we stand to our feet and just lift our hands today. Praise you, Lord. Lord, we glorify you and we praise your name today. We ask, Father, that you would just, Lord, just fill us today with the Holy Spirit. Lord, though we may already be filled, we may already speak in tongues, God, but Lord, we need more of you today. We need a dose of the Holy Spirit today. We need an outpouring on our lives. And I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would just come and you would fill each one of us, that you would give us a new strength for this day, for this journey that we're in, for the hour that we live in, that we would have that self-control active in our lives, that we're not saying things that are binding you. Mm. But we're saying things that loose you on our lives, that loose you in our land. And I just declare to you today, be careful of your words. Your words matter. God is saying to you today that you need to watch what you say because the words that you declare and decree, whatever a man sows is what he's going to reap. And in whatever words you're sowing, that is what you're going to reap. So I pray, Father God, that we would begin to sow the word of the Lord, that the hammer of the Lord would begin to drop, God, and break up the stones that are in our life, in the lives of people around us, Father God, in our country that we can break the stones in our country, Father God, by the word of the Lord. And that you give us strength, Holy Spirit. That you just fill us overflowing. And that everywhere we go, Lord, that we declare the word of the Lord. That everywhere we go, we would drop the hammer on every situation. But Lord, we'd not be overrun by our emotions. We not be overrun by the, the emotions of people around us. But Lord, we'd be the strong one. Though we are weak, you are strong in us. Though we may not know what to say, you have the words for us. Lord, as you told Jeremiah, when Jeremiah said, Lord, I, I don't know what to say. And you responded and you said, I'm stretching forth my hand and I'm going to put the words in your mouth. I pray that over every person here today, that you stretch forth your hand to them today and put the words in their mouth. Holy Spirit, that you would just fill each one of us today with flow. Release in people today their heavenly language, Father God. That Lord, they can begin to pray in the Spirit and in understanding. Lord, that when we don't know what to pray in our understanding, Lord, that we would pray in the Spirit. And that, Lord, that you would do a supernatural work in each one of us. And we would use the authority that you have given us to put down anger and malice and those things we read about, God. That we not hold on to those things, but we'd walk in the Spirit of truth with love, joy, peace, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, kindness, self-control. Give us strength today by your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord a big hand today. Hallelujah. Be, be seated for a moment. I got a few announcements. 
you know, my, my first announcement would be keep praying. Keep praying for our people. You know, um, uh, Robert Vargas, you know, he, he did get COVID from, from work. And uh, I talked to his son yesterday. And his son said, Dad needs to retire. <laughs> he does. So Stephanie is his daughter too. So Alyssa Robles got COVID. So that's why they're not here. So just be praying, you know. Um, there's been, been a number of people. Pastor Jimmy Del Campo from New Beginnings got COVID, you know. So keep them in prayer. There's a lot of people being hit, but I still declare Psalm. I love it. Uh, Mama Priscilla, Friday night, she just declared Psalms 91 over us. And man, I stand upon that. Thousand fall at my left, 10,000 at my right, but it shall not come near me. Amen. Keep declaring that, decreeing that over your life. You know, and um, why would it hit one and not the other? I don't know, but I'm just, no, it's not going to come near me. Amen. That's what I'm declaring. So join us for prayer on Friday nights, on Monday through Friday at 7 p.m. We try to do a half hour Monday through Thursday and fr an hour on Friday, but every, every meeting's gone over and uh, we don't apologize for that. We just get caught up in it and we just keep running with it. <laughs> it's, it's fun. You know, you might want to get, I think, yes, come on. So we, we probably take communion again. We took communion a couple of nights this week. We'll probably take communion again tomorrow. So get it ready. Just come when you check in at seven, have your bread and your wine ready or your juice. And then um, Lifted Youth online, live on Instagram, Wednesday nights at 7, 7.30. Okay, so 7.30 Wednesday nights for all the young people. And then see ya. You know, our young adults is, is called see ya. And it means college young adults. And I didn't know that, so I just started calling it Sia. And they're like, oh, that's a good name, Pastor. I'm like, <laughs> I just saw Sia on Instagram. So they're on Friday nights at uh, 7 with Jake and Liz Marvel. So uh, join them. And then um, we're going to have a membership meeting. We haven't had a membership meeting in a long time, but we have a lot of new people here. If you believe in what God is doing here and you want to become a member of New Hope, um, January 23rd on a Saturday at 10 a.m., we're going to do the meeting here in the sanctuary, so there'll be plenty of social distancing. But I do have a sign-up sheet right out those doors on that table right there. You believe in what God is doing here, and I know you know many of you have been tied here. We have a lot of new people here since all this COVID thing started. And um, so we'd like you to join the church. And um, then we're going to have our annual business meeting on September, February 7th. And see, all these are tentative. Amen. They're all tentative. So you may get a, a, you put your phone number on there. You may get a call from me that says, Hey, we're doing a zoom or whatever. You know, we'll do what we have to do, but we're going to keep moving forward. Amen. We're not going to stop. We're not going to slow down. We're going to keep moving forward. We're doing more meetings now than we ever have. And it's great. And then we have another blood drive. They called me this week. They said, Hey, would you mind helping us out the whole year? I said, not a problem. So every 56 days, we're having a blood drive here at New Hope. The next one is February 23rd, not February 8th. February 23rd on a Tuesday. I've already signed up. You can go to redcross.com and uh, sign up, register and sign up, and you can give blood. Amen. I gave blood. I have, you know, they let you know if you have any COVID stuff in you. I have none in me. Hallelujah. And um, so I'm A positive, and uh, my blood went to... They, they tell you where they sent your blood and everything. They sent me an email. It went to uh, uh, the Kaiser in uh, Baldwin Park. And uh, I'm like, wow, great. So um, they, need, they need blood. A lot of operations are being put off right now because they don't have enough blood. So sign up and give blood. Let's help save lives. Amen. You know, and um, I don't see any of our food workers here. But be praying for our food workers on Friday, on Saturday. The ones that hand out food. We've been feeding a lot of families, you know, 80 to 100 families a week we're feeding, 110 even one Sunday, Saturday. But these ladies are working six days a week. They're picking up food every day right now. We're trying to back off from one store a little bit because it's just so much for us. But be praying for them. These ladies, I mean, look, Gloria, she's in her 60s. She looks like she can barely walk, but she carries these big old heavy boxes around. And she's just a beast. But, and if you want to help, let me know and we'll get you there because we're trying to give them a break. You know, Esperanza was off for a month and uh, 
Um, I, I filled in for her. I did the pickups for her three days a week and stuff. And it was, it, it's work, man. I'm like, man, you guys work. I had a six by 12 foot trailer a couple of weeks ago and I filled that thing complete from Sprouts and Ralph's. They gave me like 12 cases of meat. So we try to give out a lot of food and they, they, everybody gets a box about this big. So please be praying for the workers and uh, you want to say something, honey? Come on. Friday, I, I did um, decree out there that, you know, there are people out here who need a helping hand. If you, they have circumstances in their life. Maybe they're homeless or maybe they don't have a big family like yours that steps in and helps them. We need helping hands. And right now, Mary Lopez needs a home, a room and prayer. So if you have a room, I, I desire to see her taken care of. You know what I mean? You may, may know her. She fits right here under my arm. <laughs> my little she's life. a tiny so little thing. I love her and she's going through it and she needs a place to stay, a safe place, godly place, and one where she'll be loved. Okay. But we do, we need helping hands. So I really would ask that you would pray about things, how you can help. Lord, what do I have that you've blessed me with that I can use for your kingdom? If you can paint, good. <laughs> Call me. I'd like to paint a few walls. You know, because Pastor Ron and I are believing for our home. And I know that that's just a tool in our hands. And it's even been prophesied that it's going to be bigger than I thought. It's never been, I told my daughters, because they questioned me on it. Mom, why do you need such a big house? Well, I don't. The Lord's been showing me pictures for many years now, and he's had me interceding for it. I don't need more than just one room with my honey. But the Lord wants us to have it because it's a tool in our hands. And it's going to be his tool, just like our pool house was. And we will house and... And have meetings and do whatever it is that the Lord calls us to do with this home because it's a tool. So pray. What tools has the Lord given you? Get out of your comfort zone a little bit and share and Amen. extend a helping hand. We, we have, we've always had people living with us. Um, we've had whole families move in with us. We had a husband and wife, son and daughter move in with us and mother-in-law. Well, you're bringing your mother-in-law. <laughs> She's a sweetie. So, you know, if God puts it on your heart to help somebody, just let us know. It's been a good day. You done? It doesn't have to be a room to share your home. It could be anything. But there's people out there who want to change their lifestyle, who want to do something different. They want to serve God. They need a helping hand. Amen. Okay. Why don't we stand? Why don't you just turn and wave at somebody? <laughs> it's great to have you all with us today. Uh, don't hug Delanda. <laughs> I talk about social distancing and there she runs. <laughs> Let's pray. Father, we glorify you. We exalt you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you are the glory and the lifter of our head. As we go our way today, we go with the filling of the Spirit of God inside of us. And Lord, I pray that you just give us that self-control over our emotions this week, God, that you constantly remind us, Holy Spirit, of what we have in you, that we have all authority over those things. And Lord, that we don't have to get caught up in everything, but we do need to pray, we need to worship, and we need to stay focused on Jesus in your word. So give us strength for this journey. And Lord, I pray protection over every person here today, that it shall not come near us in the name of Jesus. And we thank you and we praise you. I pray you bless them indeed. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Have a great day. We'll see you uh, Monday through Friday and then next Sunday.